whenever we are trying to learn something complex, it helps to understand it better if we could break it down into smaller sections or parts or layers. Let's take the example of a complex postal system. The sender writes a letter and he would post it in a post box near his house. The local postman would collect the letters from these boxes at various intervals and takes them to the local post office which will typically be in a village or a town or some part of a big city. These letters are then sent to a regional post office, example south side, east side, west side or north regions of the country. Here the major decision is made on how the letter would be transmitted either by road or rail or air or by waters. It would then reach the destination side regional post office from where it is routed to a local post office. From there, the postman would carry the letter to the final destination and deliver it. Like this, the complex postal system can be broken down into nine layers of operation. Similarly, when we try to understand how communication between two computers work, it is good idea to break down the entire communication into different layers. This is done by OSI reference model. OSI stands for Open Systems Interconnection. It was developed and proposed by ISO, which stands for International Standards Organization. The model breaks down the network communication into seven different layers, each layer having a specific function. The model is called a reference model because it is used mostly from a theoretical perspective to break down and understand the network communication. The seven layers are as follows. Layer 1 is physical. Layer 2 is data link layer. Layer 3 is network layer. Layer 4 is transport layer. Layer 5 is session layer. Layer 6 is presentation layer and layer 7 is the application layer. The top layers are sometimes referred to as software layers and the functions of these layers are usually handled by the host or a computer. Then there is the transport layer which is considered as the heart of OSI. The lower three layers are called hardware layers. The functions of these layers are delivered by network devices like routers, switches and cables. It will be easier to understand the OSI layer if we can trace a complete path from sender to the recipient. When the sender sends a message or a packet or a file, it is passed from application layer all the way to the physical layer. And on the recipient end, it traverses from physical layer to the application layer. We will look at an example to understand this better. Before that, let's learn what each layer is meant to do. It is a good way to learn the OSI layer with the following attributes for each layer. The layer number, the layer name, functions of the layer, devices that work in that particular layer, protocols that work in that layer, and the PDU, protocol data unit which means the form of the data at that particular layer. Let's start from the top, layer 7, that is application layer. This layer acts as an interface between users and computers. It provides various services to the users. Applications produce a lot of data which has to be transferred over the network. Computer works at layer 7 and the protocols that work at this layer include HTTP, SMTP, FTP, etc. The data is in its original format, that is data itself. Next we have layer 6, presentation layer. In this layer, the data from application layer is extracted and manipulated as per the required format to be transmitted over the network. Things like translation, encryption and decryption, encoding and decoding, compression and decompression happen here. Again, computers are responsible to do the functions of the presentation layer. Protocols include JPEG, MPEG, TLS, SSL, etc. 
Data is still data, but however, in a different format because of all the encoding, encryption, or compression that might be applied. Next is layer five, that is session layer. This layer is responsible for establishment of connection, maintenance of the sessions, authentication, and also ensures security. So the protocols include NetBIOS, NFS, RPC, etc. The data is still in the form of data itself. Layer 4 is a transport layer. It provides reliable message delivery from process to process, ensures that the message are transmitted in the order in which they were sent, and there is no duplication of data. It is also responsible for error control and flow control. The entire TCP UDP protocol suites work at transport layer. The data is in the form of segments. Next, we have layer 3, network layer. Network layer works for the transmission of data from one host to the other host located in a different network. It takes care of packet routing, that is selection of shortest path to transmit the packet from number of routes available. Devices that work at layer 3 include routers, firewalls, IPS, etc. The protocols include RIP, OSPF, DHCP, and IP. The data is in the form of packets. Then comes layer 2, the data link layer, which is responsible for the node-to-node -node delivery of the messages. It does framing, error control, and flow control. Data link layer is divided into two sublayers called logical link control and media access control. Switch work at layer 2. Protocols include ARP, Ethernet, PPP, EAP, etc. The data is in the form of frames here. Then we have layer 1 that is the physical layer which is responsible for the actual physical connection between the devices. Things like hub, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, cables work here. Protocols include 802.11 and the data is in the form of bits here. We will have a better understanding of these layers if we discuss them with an example. Let's learn how email flow happens between a sender and recipient using a OSI model. The sender uses an application like Outlook to compose and send the email, which happens at the application layer. The email is encoded or encrypted and compressed if necessary which happens at the presentation layer. The sending server initiates the connection with the rece receiving server, that is, at the session layer. The entire email flow is done error-free, receiving all the acknowledgements whenever re required, which is taken care by the transport layer. Each packet will be routed from sender email server to the recipient email server by the network layer. Node-to-node -node transmission happens using the next hops MAC address at the data link layer. All the data is transmitted as bits through cables or wireless signals at the physical layer. On the recipient side, the data moves from cable to user machines where the presentation layer will take care of decoding, decrypting and decompressing the data. Finally, the Outlook application will display the message to the recipient. I know a few questions might be bothering you like how will the packet reach the router without touching the cables first? Which means it will go to layer 1 first before hitting the layer 3. How can connection be established in session layer without routers and other network devices which typically work in layer 3? Yes, your questions are valid. But remember, we learned earlier that OSI architecture is called the reference model. It's a theoretical model. That's why another model was developed called the TCP IP model. TCP IP model is a more practical one. It was developed by Department of Defense of USA and has only four layers. The top three layers in the OSI reference model were shrunk to one layer and it's called the application layer. And this layer does everything the three layers did in OSI reference model. 
the transport and the network layer remain the same with the same functionality and the lower two layers that is the data link layer and the physical layer were combined as one layer called network interface layer the network interface layer is also sometimes referred to as network access layer or host to network layer